going forward uh, in the in the the rest of the podcast, though, I, I wanted to to kind of dial it back from a lot of the the technical side of things uh, and just kind of relax in the holiday spirit, right? For as long as I can, uh, because uh, in inevitably I will have to bounce back from the holidays. Um, for me, that's that's right after the start of the year, after after next weekend. Um, and I am dreading that. So I, I, I put this together just to kind of personally talk through for me, what does that look like? Uh, so so my situation right now is I am uh, taking this week off. Today's actually my birthday. Uh, so I am I am as as you could probably tell, I, I love doing this uh, so much so that I would I would do nothing else uh, on today other than this. Um, but after that, um, I will be uh, spending the New Year's celebrating and then coming back to work. And it always feels like, you know, it's a new year. It's a it's 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 a you know gung ho season. But what is the best way for me to attack this? And what's the best way for me to come back in my stride? Um, and and I use that analogy because I, I see this as equivalent to jumping back into a workout. Sc- uh, schedule after having taken a break as I may or may not have done recently. Oops. Okay. And, and so it's like, well, how how do you, how how do you want to do this? Right. What is a realistic way to take a minimum viable action to get back into the swing of things? Right. So, so I'm going to reference back to what we talked about earlier in, in, in far as uh, minimum viable actions and say, the the first thing you want to do is is actually start doing it right and and whatever it is so if i'm talking about a workout you know i i do want to get myself out there and and actually work out working out again right um if it's getting back into work i need to you know sit myself down and and look at my board and, and figure out stuff to do um so that's that's obviously step number one is is to kind of prep yourself to get yourself into that i think in the article they say you know if you are uh, going to the well, if if one of your your actions is to go to the gym the minimum viable action would be to you know get get dressed up in gym clothes get in the car turn the car I on I loved that I saw that I loved that I thought that was hilarious and that's because the end of it because you're going to look like yeah yeah you can deliver the punchline on it. I I love this one yeah yeah because because if if you walk back inside after having done that you'll look like an idiot so you might as well just go work out so so we, we, we understand the, the notion of minimum viable action. Okay, so, but how do you make sure you don't stay in that state of, of minimum viable action, right? Uh, especially getting into something that you've already been good at because, you know, I'm, I'm knocking off these tasks, you know, in, in, in October, November, early December, right? I'm just kind of churning through these things because I have a, a lot of working time, right? And, you know, having, having meetings with people, I'm used to my meeting cadence, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going from, from conversation to conversation to literally for two and a half weeks not talking to anyone at work. Right. So, so how do you get back into the swing of things? Um, the first thing I wanted to, to th- touch on is, is, you know, what, what is skippable versus what is unskippable? So I have my workout schedule. Um, I basically have Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, right. Is, is kind of what I've been sticking to, um, where I've made mistakes in the past is to say, Oh no, I missed Monday. I now have to squeeze four days of a workout into the last four days of the week, right? That sure. is a recipe for disaster, right? Um, specifically with with that, um, you know, or, or, or sometimes I've made the excuse, okay, well, I can skip Monday, but like I want to go for an extra run and I'm going to do that on Saturday, right? And, and that just leads to overtraining, right? Your body has this great mechanism where it forces you to take time off you know, and if you don't do it intelligently, it will, it will, you know, it, it will insist upon it and it will, it will make you take weeks off if you push it too hard. So having, having learned from that, right, the, the trust you have to put in your schedule is to say, I trust that if I come back on a Friday, right, and I, I work out on my Friday and I know I have Saturday and Sunday off, 
I'm not going to try to cram extra workouts in those days, right? But I'm going to trust that, all right, fine. A at least I got Friday, right? I, I got my butt in the car and dressed and I, I you know, went to the gym to avoid, you know, uh, avoid being made fun of. But I'm going to give those days of rest, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to take those days of rest. And I'm going to come back Monday refreshed, ready to go and ready to to be on my schedule right there is there's nothing worse you can do is to than to than to try to over over engineer yourself into i'm going to get the same amount of workout every week right because because you're not it's, it's life happens right yeah so i'm going to come back you know if i come back on tuesday i'll do tuesday uh, i'll skip wednesday and i'll do thursday and friday if i come back friday i'll i'll, I'll start friday i'll skip Saturday and Sunday is my rest days, and then I'll, I'll come back Monday. I mean, I'm, I'm trusting the system that, that I know works for me, right? Because I, I, I can sustain that, and, and having taken a break, come back into that, right? Now, we see that a lot with uh, meetings, with maintenance tasks, um, and, and a lot of the things that aren't super important when it comes to, to our work, right? But what, what about the things that, that are unskippable? What about the tasks that make up our pillars for Q4, right? About what, what about the, the bigger projects, right? How do you get back into the swing of those things? Um, and, and that's where I, I kind of wanted to have a conversation on Kanban versus calendar. Um, not before having seen how alliterative that was, um, just realizing that right now. But Camboard versus calendar, how do we how do we approach what goes on what? Uh, and I think uh, the 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 beauty of a Kanban system is its ability to call out unskippable tasks. For sure. instance, uh, laundry for me is an unskippable task. And and yes, I'm a nerd. I'm a board nerd. I have everything in boards, even my laundry schedule. So if I see that, you know, I'm, I, I need to do laundry today. Uh, it's, it's not necessarily a task I need to do immediately. Usually I give myself a, a buffer period, right? Cause, cause I'll schedule it, you know, every week or for other things every two weeks. Um, and, and, and go through that cycle. But if I miss a day, I can't pick it up in two weeks because I will have no clean underwear by that time. I must do my laundry within sure. that buffer period. Totally. <laughs> so, <clears throat> so the the board system, a, 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 a board system, whether that be Kanban or something else, will will drop that task. Uh, into your into your whip or into your planning or, or, or what have you but it will it will show that to you and say um, I know this is overdue Andrew by the way uh, y you still need to complete this y y you can't just skip this yeah so then I then I say all right, all right I'll just go do my laundry and, and 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 off I am and and when it comes back around two weeks later um, actually Camboard is cool in that I can schedule it to say not from the first two weeks, but from like when I, when I actually did it, th that, that two weeks. So it's a, it's a rolling two week schedule instead of a set every month. It's the first and the 15th or whatever like that. It's, it's something that can, that can roll if I eat into some of that buffer time. Um, but it, it, it does force me to not skip that task, right? Another one is... Um, I record uh, who um, did the collections uh, at, at church, right? Yeah. So we want to make sure that, you know, people aren't being overburdened. So we just kind of want to maintain a record. And, and if we around. see someone, yeah. if we see someone's picked up the last, you know, three months worth of collections, let's say, ah, let's get someone else into the rotation here. Let's, let's make totally. sure that's a healthy rotation. And. I don't care if that's done right after church. I don't care if that's done Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Really, as as long as it's done before the next week, right? That's that's fine. But I know that every time I'm going to be logging in my board, that's going to be sitting there waiting for me. And it's really simple to do. I, I it's really just adding a line in a Excel spreadsheet. But I know that if it's not there for me, and if I schedule it on a calendar, say on Sunday, yeah. I'm going to forget about it Sunday and come Monday, I'm going to be looking at my Monday calendar and Sunday calendar is going to be, it's, it's a thing of the Gone past. Yesterday, literally. Yeah. So, so what 
what is a board grid for versus what is a calendar? Specifically, when we take a look at these two types of, of tasks with these these skippable tasks and these these unskippable tasks, right? Um, when I'm when I'm falling back into my meeting cadence, I, I fully expect those to be in my calendar, right? I I want to have some kind of an external note taking system because I'm not going to have tasks for those. I'm not going to have a place to take notes and follow up with a specific task or project in that because that would be one, it could be part of a bigger project, right? Which, which I would have other tasks to take notes in. Um, but it in itself should be on a calendar. That's something that's skippable and something I should be able to fall right back into. Um, something that's, that's unskippable are tasks that I left off that haven't been completed updates, upgrades, uh, what, what have you, right? So those would need to be caught up on, right? And, and we want to mentally separate those uh, because if we treat either one of them in an incorrect manner, we over over uh, burden ourselves, right? We, we have a mental burden and, and we say, I have to carry this all in my head. Oh, I need to remember that I've missed the past two weeks of this and I need to go catch up on it, right? Well, no, you, 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 need, to, you need to jump back into your, your meeting schedule and, and just continue forward, right? You need to jump into your laundry schedule and just continue forward, right? If I do end up three weeks back on my, my laundry schedule, that means I, I, I need to do it now. Right. Yeah. That's that's an that's an unskippable task. Right. Something that's that's skippable is is something that, uh, you know, up, updating our, our API keys. Right. That we, we have that that built in. We can we can do we can fall right back into that cadence. Right. Um, so. The. The work that I I don't want to get overwhelmed with is is looking at all of these tasks, figuring out that there are some that are, that I should just be falling back into the cadence of and worrying about the ones that I've missed, worrying about past um, meetings, worried about, you know, past um, maintenance yeah. tasks um, and, and, and making sure that I can fall in and, and not try to overwork myself on those to the detriment of the unskippable tasks or else I will have no tasks that get end up completed. So I don't know if that resonated at all. Um, that was just something that I was bouncing around in my head. I I'll tell you what though. I I do like the count. So you, I know you have the uh, you have a due date, right? Yeah. You have a due date on this the the uh, Kanban yeah. test. Now, yeah. do you have a time associated with those? What do you mean? At that point, like a t like say it. Do you have a it? Fine. It's due at seven thirty. Do you have a start ta a start time for those? I assume they move into like in progress on the certain day, right? Yes. Uh, so uh, day or days before uh, it moves into a separate column, right? So okay. it, it moves into a visible column, right? Um, so I know that you and I move a lot of what we have in pending over into planned for the next upcoming yeah. weeks, yeah. right? Yeah. And then um, it moves to in progress automatically. Ex Some exactly. Of them do. Yeah. So, so tricks like that. Um, are, are what I pull on my on my board uh, to to automatically have that indicated to me. Okay, so you, okay, I've got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, now, so that's also also uh, and and this gets interesting, but those those due dates that you mentioned, those are actually replicated to my own personal calendar. So I and that's have, what I was going to ask you. Yeah. I was going to ask you: Do you have either the start date or the due date? replicated somewhere maybe not blocked off mm -hmm. i wouldn't say blocked off but just something as like a hey by the way this is on your board right now or yeah and and that's an interesting point because if i had a start date then i would be av actively blocking off time to do that from my calendar which is which right. is a lie right that that's right. that's not the time it, you know it may take me three hours but it's not gonna be the three hours before the due date Right, right. right. It, it's it's going to be three hours in some kind of t uh, a, a time before that, some kind of a work time that I have set aside, you know, every day or, you know, three days a week or something like that. And 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 partially this this thought process, this this kind of trying to trying to make sense of this, all kind of stem from this random article, and I do not have a link to it, but you know, this is one of the ones I pulled up on my endless scrolling through Reddit, and. 
it, it was talking about why to-do lists suck and why, you know, calendars yeah. are the only way to, to go about doing things. And, and they're like, well, if you don't have due dates, then things don't get done. I'm like, well, boom, I already have due dates for all my... That's tasks, already on right? the board, yeah. Um, right. Another thing they brought up, though, is like the the disparity that you can feel when you don't get stuff accomplished, right? And I've tried to offset that with you and I when we talk about completed complexity, we talk about splitting up tasks, right? So I want my board to always be accurately representative of the work that got done, right? Yeah. I, I never want it to be, uh, yeah, but, or right. no except, right? Right. It, it, it should always reveal to us the truth, right? So, so if we've gotten half of a task done, we move that half task, we, we split the task and move the half that we got done into done, right? That gives us that sense of accomplishment, you know, and, and, and it shows visually that we've accomplished that. We can go back and reference it when we do these these podcasts, when we take a look at the developments. I say, what well, got done? Well, we'll half of this one task, but it's still worth talking about. So if if we have that, that kind of offsets it. Uh, the, the calendar crowd, though, said, you know, as long as you kind of stick to the schedule where you, you go in and do the work that you've set aside in these times, right, you can count that as a success, right? Uh, and Well, I was going to say with that, how do you, then you're getting into time estimation, right? You're not yeah. getting into complexity, complete, complexity, completion, because stuff, you might say a three, but that could, that varies, right? That might, that, and now... Generally, we have a pretty good idea for what that looks like, but mm -hmm. some three tasks are a lot different than other three tasks. Like there might be, I, and I think of, you know, programming versus editing the podcast, right? At the base level, you might say, all right, it's a, a three complexity for writing a program. That might take me, you know, an hour versus the podcast to sit down and edit everything, right? It's an hour to start, right? It's yeah. an hour to start. You're starting in an hour, and then you're going from there. Now, it's not very complex. It's not killing my brain doing everything, but it's a different three. Com they're different three complexities, which is kind of where on that calendar subject, I find it very hard to estimate. All right, do I give myself one hour to do this, yeah. or do I give myself three yeah. hours to do this? And, and then you end up not making your your due dates that you've set so far in the future, right? And and blocking off the time. Now, now the argument to the to to the calendar crowd is that you know that way i don't have to feel like something is looming over my head when i'm taking free time right um it, i i can i can say you know i've put in my three hours of work i want to do on on any of my given r compose projects at, at that time and fine but I, i'd say that get back get gets back to the board thing you can spend three hours diddling your thumbs saying this is yep. work but is it done yeah. if it's not done if if yeah. you have one more thing to do it's not done right yep. it could be 99 percent done and it's still not done which is kind of where i would argue against the and, calendar. and then, it, then it becomes even worse because then you're sitting down with three hours ahead of you thinking oh how am i going to procrastinate for three what hours? am i going to do with this right and and, and and having the ability to have, you know, a couple different tasks and whip and say, you know what, today I'm going to sit down and I'm going to start this thing. I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to do the MBA on this one task. Maybe that doesn't get your motor revving. Right. Maybe that's the thing that just sucks today. And you're like, all right, try it. I'm spending Not five minutes me. on it. Yep. Not for me. I'm going to move on to the next thing. You move on to the next thing. And then you're in that for four and a half. And then it's like, you know, 1130 at night. And you're like, where did the time go? <laughs> um, I actually kind of want to go over. There's a book called the Hather, the hacker ethic, uh, which, which has a, a interesting chapter on time. I might bring that up next. I might just dive into that chapter. And, 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 and that is where I got a lot of my early, uh, inspiration from when it comes to time management, right. And, and how work does not necessarily equal time. And, and a lot of, a lot of that argumentation, it takes what it takes, right. And, and so the way to measure success is not in time. So figure out something else. And I, I think we've done a, a good job figuring out that that's something else. Right. And we've been able to steadily march forward towards, yeah. towards a, a, a comprehensive suite of tools, right? Something that is going to be beneficial to people. Some, something that self hosters are going to want to sit down and say, Hey, this is something that's pretty cool. Or, or people who, 
don't necessarily want to self-host, but you know, for for any of the other reasons, the you know, economical reasons, right? Uh, the 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 sustainability reasons, the uh, the political reasons. I, I I don't care why, right? If, if this is something you're into, I want to make sure that I'm putting out the best product, right? Not that I'm spending the appropriate amount of time working on it, right? Um, and and so I, I I think both you and I have. A place to do that for for our compose right and i know that the the broader open source ecosystem that is the, the the same mentality that i see there right so so as we 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 kind of push this mentality forward this this the standard of excellence right we want to be continuing to raise the bar and this is the way we raise the bar right with with good habits like these right with with the ability to, to see work rightly and to to humanize it Right to to say people need to see successes. People need to to get that kind of positive feedback, right? And and so I pledge to continue to to look in and and, and develop that strategy. If if you know if anyone's out there, and you're thinking, I I don't deal with people well, right? Or you know I have I have trouble getting myself motivated. Right. Or I, I don't I don't like the direction that we are heading in, who, whoever we is. Right. Whoever we is. That's a weird way to say that. What, whoever we is. We would be more than happy to sit down and say, we've we've worked through this stuff. We, we know the stuff pretty well. Let us listen to what you have to say and and come to an understanding of, of where you are so we can figure out where you need to be more than happy to do that. I, I set aside birthday birthday time to do this um, because it's it's what I love to do so if if you're out there and you don't love to do this I would be more than happy to, to ease that discussion but for the time being we hope you enjoyed this episode of our compose cast thank you be safe and we'll see you all in two weeks bye everybody